go to our Bibles and go to First Timothy again. Uh, again, I said say that because it's uh, we've look, been looking at it for a few weeks, and um, tonight we're at First uh, Timothy chapter two, and we're going to look at two verses, verses nine and ten. And what Paul says, the way he starts this verse out, he's, he's not starting a verse, of course, he's just continuing his writing, and he says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. And before I begin looking at that, um, let, let, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Can somebody answer the question, why do we wear clothes? Cover our, uh, to cover our nakedness. And that's only one reason. What's the other? What's that? <laughs> to keep warm. <laughs> to keep warm. Uh, I think we do that now, but I don't think that was the original purpose. Because I, I don't think they, I mean, if they can walk around with no clothes, it must have been warm already. Anybody know what the other reason was? Well, let's, let's read it, and then, I'm gonna, then, I'm gonna, then I'll ask, okay? Look at just two verses, verse number 7. This is after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Okay, now look at verse number 21. This was after God came to and cursed the earth. It says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So, can you see from that what the two reasons are? Number one, to cover the nakedness. What's the other one? Their, what? Eyes, were Their eyes were opened to what? Sin. To sin. Okay, that's it. That's the other reason. God covered them. They covered themselves with fig leaves. That wasn't God's way. So God covered them with skins. And if he, if he covered them with skins, there's only two ways he could have gotten the skins. One is he created the skin for them, or he killed an animal. Okay, and of course that pictures the death of Christ not an animal, but the death of Christ. Of course, God pictured the uh, the death of Christ in the, all of the sacrifices in the Old Testament. Jesus was going to die for the sins of mankind. So the picture we get from this is that God provided for Adam's and Eve's sin by covering their sin up, the knowledge of sin. They knew they were naked. They covered themselves up, but... It didn't. It, I mean, if that if if their aprons were large enough, they could have covered the whole body and covered them up from the viewpoint of each other and covering up their nakedness. But that wasn't all they needed. They needed their sin taken care of. So the exposure, and it was an exposure of sin and skin when they sinned against God. And so uh, it's not just. And this is what we need to remember. The way we dress is not just to cover our nakedness, but it is to cover our sinfulness. You, know, I, you might not think that, but clothing shows us that we are sinners because God uh, covered Adam and Eve. Now let's go back to 1 Timothy 2. And when we think about this idea of, of uh, adorning, he says, he says, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Does that mean men don't have to? <laughs> That's not what he's talking about. He is talking specifically about uh, when people are um, worshiping. Okay, and That's why he uses the, the term in like manner. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But God told um, Samuel... When Samuel went to look for the new king after Saul was told, told he can't not going to be king anymore, God told Samuel not to look at David's eldest brother. He says, look not on his countenance, 
This is what he said. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And that's, of course, that's what God says. I look on the heart, and all we can do is look on the outward appearance. But you know what? Our outward appearance is going to reflect what's in our hearts. Paul talks to Timothy here, and he talks about this a proper adornment for women. And like I said, he's, he's uh, talking specifically about the, uh, the church. Look down, look at verse number, or chapter 3, verse number 14. Paul says, These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church and the, of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So he says, I'm telling you how things should be done in church. And so the proper adorning, specifically here, he's talking about in church, but it does apply. What, what, are, what are we supposed to be doing in church? What's our purpose? Worshiping God. And we have some fellowship, but the purpose of coming together to meet is not uh, on Sundays and on Wednesdays is not just a fellowship and that's not even a major part of it the major and majority of the the reason we come is to worship God now at what point during the week are you not to worship God double negative, double negative never <laughs> ever okay uh, you are not to worship you are always at all times and you are in to be in uh, at all times in the proper condition of worshiping God. So the outer appearance, you know, I'll just take me for an example. When I come to church, everybody knows I wear a suit when I preach on Sunday morning. Usually on Sunday night. Sometimes I take my coat off on Sunday night if it's hot during the summer. But we, we, we dress a certain way. Okay. Does that mean I'm because I'm supposed to worship all during the week, I need to wear a suit when I work on my car? No. no. Okay, so, so there's times, there's oper- there are times to have certain attire. Okay? But here, when he says that, he's specifically about church. But it does apply also in other situations. Now, he doesn't talk about, about um, the style of clothing or anything like that. What he wants to deal with in, in the most particular point is the heart. And that's the most important part of all of this. So it's not really the place of worship, but it's the heart that we need to um, recognize. Now, in today's society, a lot of Christians will... Should I say a lot? I would say, yeah, if you... If, Churchgoers, let's put it that way. We'll use the terminology that, that kids use, and, and uh, we think about what uh, kids do and say, and the parent, what the parents say because the kids say that. Somebody says, well, mo- well, Johnny's mommy lets him do this. What's the proper answer for a parent? It doesn't matter if Johnny's mother told him he could jump off a cliff. Are you going to go jump off a cliff? It's okay. They look at other Christians and say, well, it's okay for them to express themselves this way, whether it's dress or words, then I guess it's okay with me. But who are we supposed to compare ourselves with? Jesus Christ, God. And and, and so if I'm going to compare myself with Him, then boy, there's a lot of things I'm not going to do that other Christians are doing. Because God is the authority and not other people or other Christians. So Paul talks about this adorning and he says in like manner. Okay, in like manner means what? Well, there's something before this and we talked about it last uh, last week. Uh, look, But I'm going to look just back at verse number Eight. He says, I will therefore, that means his desire and what he says they should do, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Can anybody uh, remind us what holy hands means? Owen. 
You have your notes from last week and you're looking at them, you're cheating? No. Uh, hands without sin. Hands without sin. In fellowship with God. Uh, if, we, if we have sin in our lives and, and we haven't done anything about it, we haven't confessed it, we can't s sit in church and lift up our hands. And they're not holy. Okay, so lifting up holy hands. So in like manner, if you want to look at lifting up holy hands, but then look also at what he's saying without wrath and doubting. So in like manner, in that way, without, with holy hands, without wrath, without doubting, that women adorn themselves, okay? That doesn't, that, it, it's almost as if we were looking at this and, and we separate verses 8 and 9, and we're thinking Paul changes subjects, and he doesn't. That's why it, in, in like manner is there. He's not changing the subject. But if, a, if the woman or men, Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to focus just on women. There's a, there's more of a, a danger, I'll say, in the way women dress than the way men dress. Okay, so that's just, and we'll look at that a little bit. But uh, so I believe that's what one of the points that he's making. But he says, adorn themselves. That women adorn themselves. Uh, Peter talks about adorning. Now, when Peter talks about it, let's go over to First Peter. He's, he's coming off of uh, um, what he says about Jesus Christ and how Jesus uh, lived his life even as he was being um, persecuted and put to death. And, and Paul Peter uses the term likewise in chapter 3, verse number 1. He says likewise, and that's, like I said, just coming off of what Jesus, as our example, he says likewise ye wives... Be in subjection to your own husbands. Now, Jesus wasn't being in subjection to his own husband, but who is Jesus in subjection to? God the Father. Okay, so in like in like manner or likewise. Uh, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, and I'm, not, I'm going to read this, but this isn't what I'm going to focus on, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Now we're coming to the, the point. We're in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 right now and verse number 3. He says, who's adorning? He's talking about the wives now, okay? And that would apply to women who aren't married, okay? Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, of great price. Okay, so who's adorning? Now, there's three, three places he mentions the adorning. Uh, what is, what is uh, it's coming close, you know, just in uh, uh, two months. Well, today's the 26th, so just, uh, just a little less than two months we come to Christmas Day. What do people do with uh, Christmas trees uh, for Christmas? What do they do with them? What's that? We adorn them with what? Ornaments. Okay, so so this is what Paul is saying. Adorning with ornaments. He says he says it three times. Who's adorning? Uh, actually, he only says it once, and the translators have added into here through two more times to point, keep reminding us what Paul is talking about. He says, who's adorning? Let it not be that outward, and here's the first one, adorning. Okay, it's in italics, so he's not, it's not there in the Greek, but you could say this, and, and it still makes sense. Let it not be that outward of plating, plating of the hair. Okay, so it still fits. And, and even the le next part in verse number four, which is not corruptible, even the ornament. He says, let it be the hidden man of the heart, uh, in that which is not corruptible, of a meek and quiet spirit. Okay, but it's still the adorn ornament. It's still the adorning. And and it's, you see the two, two adornments that he's talking about? Number one, he's talking about not plating the hair, not dressing up and getting all fancied up. And that's okay. It's not a, it's not a problem. But he says what you should be focused on is the adornment or the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. And Peter, Paul says it back in, in 1 Timothy. Uh, he says, but with good works. 
So a meek and quiet spirit doesn't mean you <laughs> doesn't mean because you're in subjection or you're submissive to your husband. It doesn't mean that. It means the heart. A meek and by the way, the word adorning there in per, first uh, first Peter three three, that word is also used by Paul. Um, let me see where it is. It's back in uh, chapter. It's First Timothy. So let's go back to First Timothy, and uh, it's when he's dealing with the qualifications of a pastor. In uh, chapter three, look at um, verse number. Well, let's start at verse one. When he, the, the word bishop, we'll we'll get to this when we get to this this uh, chapter in a few weeks. He says, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop. A bishop is the word means overseer. And so he's talking about pastors who oversee uh, the local congregation. If he desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop, then, must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Where does it say he, what he's supposed to wear? Anything in that second verse where it talks about what what uh, the pastor is supposed to wear? Well, it, it's there, but it's, he's supposed to be wearing good behavior. That's what it is. That's the same exact word that is you. He uses up there in uh, verse number. Um, well, what what Peter uses in. 1 Peter 3.3, 3, whose adorning, whose good behavior is. Okay? So it's not just about, just like God when He when He covered the sin and skin of Adam and Eve, we have to deal with our sinfulness or our good behavior should be our adorning more than the outward. What hap- Why do people uh, outwardly Focus on their adornment. We focus. What's that? So sometimes, for people won't see the inside, and other times we focus on on I'm just going to wear what I need to because I want people to see my inside. I want to be putting forth the life that God wants me to live, so people see me. Uh, too many times. We go out in public having secret sins that nobody can see. And so, it doesn't matter how we dress on the outside. Nobody can see the inside. But it does matter what we look like. And, and that's especially what he's talking about. Both uh, Timothy or Paul in, in, in 1 Timothy and Peter, he says, in modest apparel... Uh, with shamefacedness and sobriety. When he says not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, doesn't mean you can't. But the focus shouldn't be there. Okay, The focus shouldn't be that. Um, in, in, he's dealing with gold or pearls or costly array. In, in Timothy was in Ephesus and there must have been some uh, rich people there. Look over at chapter 6. And look at verse 17. He says, Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. So he's dealing with something else here, but he's specifically telling Timothy, listen, tell those people who are rich not to trust that. Not to be focused on that. That's not life. So the reason I brought you there is because there must be some rich people there who may be dressed fancy on the outside to show off their wealth, which is not a not a, a, a modest way. So usually, when we talk about modesty, we're thinking of things like uh, uh, showing too much skin, someplace, and uh, it it it's not just that. Modesty can be um, it's it, 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 apparel needs to be appropriate for the uh, activity. Okay. How many people uh, play soccer in long dresses? So Peter, 
in First Peter one sixteen. Remember, he, he read this many times. We saw it in uh, in Leviticus. He says, "Be ye holy, for I am holy." And that's the, that's holiness, not on the outside, is it? It's on the inside. Holy is apartness, apart from the world, and and that doesn't mean that I have to I have to dress so different that people look strangely at me. But my heart needs to be right. Holy. Since we're supposed to be worshiping in church, we're not to be showing off our wealth if we're wealthy. So is it okay to show off our wealth outside of church? No, because we're supposed to be still worshiping God. <laughs> okay? The problem people have when they... think about themselves too much is they're drawing they're, they're drawing attention to themselves to their outward appearance and, it, and sometimes it's on purpose and sometimes it's not but we have to have we need to have the right uh, heart to be drawn toward God and if we're dressing outlandish at church so that other people can look at us, how can we worship? Where's my heart when I'm getting ready in the morning for for church? I, I have, I'm fortunate, okay, not because I wear suits, but because my wife picks my, out my suit. I don't even have to think about it. <laughs> so, so you can't you can't get after me for saying that you dressed you dressed so people would look at you anytime. No, she did it. Maybe she wants people to look at me, but I, I don't do it. But uh, if, we're, if our hearts are like that, thinking that way while we're getting ready, then we're not ready to worship because we're not being holy. We won't have the holy hands. We're self-centered and self-focused. Modest apparel. When we look at, uh, we talked about being ad adorned and adorning. Uh, the word modest comes from the same root word. And it's, it's where we get, it's the word world. You know, if you look at the, look at the uh, uh, many times in the, in the New Testament, you see the word world. Uh, it's the Greek word, or get this, cosmos. Now, what kind of, what words do you think comes, comes out of cosmos? Cos what? Cosmopolitan. Cosmos. Cosmos or cosmic. Cosmetics. cosmetics. Mm -hmm. How about that? What are cosmetics? <laughs> it could be just usually we think we think of cosmetics to put on the face, but uh, it, it's it's it can be anything. Uh, think about uh, well. Um, well, I'm, I, was, I was thinking of ornamental, but uh, if you have a plant that doesn't produce fruit, why do you have the plant? It's ornamental. It's part of the cosmos. It's part of the whole way you do the, 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 the orderliness in your yard. You want that ornamental plant and for your the cosmetics of your yard. Uh, but modest apparel. is the apparel that identifies with what we saw what Paul said in as the um, qualification of the pastor good behavior good behavior apparel so the apparel that's appropriate now Paul and Jesus I believe made sure people understood that it is a little more um, important for the way women dress. Go over to Matthew chapter 5. I think women, uh, this is my own personal thought on Women take a little bit more time. I'm, 
maybe it's just my wife, I don't know, I don't think it is, about getting ready because they want to look nice. Not because they want to draw attention at all times, but they want to look good. And it's important for that because even if they don't want to think about it, other women look at how women are wearing, or what they're wearing, how they're dressed. But also, men look at women at how they're dressed. And, but they look at women more, I think you can probably ask 90% of the men, do you care what other men are wearing? They say no. You don't pay attention to it. But it's easier for a man to pay attention to what a woman is wearing. And that's one of the reasons we've got to be careful. Ladies need to be careful. Look at this. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 28. And, and to think about that, what, he, what he says here, and I've always wondered about this, because I, 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 I don't get it. He says, it, um, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You know what the women wore in the first century? Pretty, pretty much the same thing the guys wore. And so a man had to really think hard to lust after her. Go over to uh, 2 Samuel. Is it 2 Samuel? Or 2 Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel 11 and uh, verse number uh, 2. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the, um, from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Usually we think that she's down there taking a bath, but it doesn't say that. She was just washing herself. She could have been just doing what she what she'd normally do. She's out in public, right? She knows that somebody can see her. I don't think she's out there taking a bath. I think she's just washing herself. But David put his eye on her. And, 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 and he lusted after her. He didn't even have to take her in and commit adultery. He did it right there. That's why he, he asked about her. And so we need to be very careful. I want to read one quote, and then we're going to stop. This is a quote from a, a man named Philo, and he, uh, he was a Jewish writer in uh, Alexandria, Egypt, during the time of Christ. And he gives a description of a harlot, okay? Having the hair of her head dressed with most superfluous elaborateness, having her eyes penciled, her eyebrows covered over, using incessant warm baths, painted with a fictitious color, exquisitely dressed with costly garments, richly embroidered, adorned with armlets and bracelets and necklaces, and all other ornaments which can be made of gold and precious stones and all kinds of female decorations. So that's the way they dressed so they could draw attention to themselves. And uh, this is... We, we've got to remember we don't want to draw attention to us we want others to draw attention to God who lives in us and so we learn how to adorn ourselves with good behavior good works um, modest apparel the Bible says and uh, uh, with a meek and quiet spirit now men are the same way we need to not draw attention to ourselves and we need to have the same kind of meek and quiet spirit of, listen, look at God. Look at Christ who lives in me. That means our behavior has to be, in a way, godly. So people can see Christ in us and not our hearts being wicked. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. And I ask that you would guide and direct us. Help us, Lord, to recognize where we fail in this matter of drawing attention to us. Lord, it's not even necessarily drawing attention to the body, but uh, to the uh, just to be paid attention to. Lord, help us to draw people to you and not to ourselves. 
Guide us now as we go to prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.